All right, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about how to get three cents real estate leads, okay? Three cents real estate leads and something called aged data secrets. <laughs> Right. Good morning, everyone. Jeff Koga here, and welcome to uh, Jeff Koga Live. Now, in uh, this episode of the podcast or video, you might be watching it all over the place. I don't know exactly where. We're going to talk about uh, how to get real estate leads for three cents and something called aged data secrets. Now, I decided to record uh, this video uh, because I want to talk to something where a lot of real estate professionals have challenges and issues, which is what? Lead generation. Now, what I'm about to cover on how to get three cent real estate leads uh, using something called Age the Data Secrets, it's gonna literally flip your business upside down in a good way, I think, you know, if you understand this concept. Now, and if you understand this concept and strategy, you can apply it in literally any business. All right, now let me first talk about how I discovered this and then we'll go into kind of the nuts and bolts of this. Now, I first discovered this uh, talking to a friend of mine who is a mortgage broker. He's a young guy, um, does really, really well, very successful guy locally here in Southern California and uh, he's kind of a marketing guy just like me and uh, I like to share ideas with other marketers because I'm a firm believer that marketers are, we're probably the most creative individual in the space of uh, entrepreneurs. So I asked him, I said, hey man, so what, what do you do to drum up business, right? Because he was talking about his mortgage business and he was talking about how it's uh, his actual uh, cost per conversion, uh, meaning, hey, from initial contact to actually converting a loan, um, he said that it's about $500, meaning that, hey, I need to make sure that, that I don't pay more than $500 to, for a closed transaction. Now, for each transaction, I said, so how much are you making off that? And he kind of broke down his number. Hey, average loan balance is about 350000 and the rips that he gets. So basically, for $500, he's making his, uh, on his rips or his take on it, I'm talking about revenue, is about $4,000. So he's getting about five, uh, I'm sorry, four X on his uh, marketing dollars, right? So where else can you put a dollar and you know for a fact that you're gonna get $4 out, all right? Now, the fact that he understood that, right, and this was the kind of the first time I actually, I knew he was a marketer, I knew he was really smart at marketing, but we never talked about numbers and we never talked about KPIs, and KPIs stand for Key Performance Indicators, and in this case, the KPIs that we're talking about here is the front end customer acquisition cost uh, and the front end uh, KPI. So he was talking about $500, and I was like, oh, okay. And I said, wow, how are you getting these uh, uh, leads? And then he said, oh man, I do something called uh, age the data. I buy age data. And I was like, what? Age data? And uh, I, and that was the first time I heard about something like that, right? And I was just like, like what is it? He's like, oh, I buy old leads. So I said, old leads? I said, well, how old? And then he said, well, older the better because typically it's cheaper. <laughs> and I started laughing. So give me some examples on pricing and, and what's the demographics of these lists. And he was just like, well, the data is, he said, it's real estate leads. I said, okay, but how is it better? And he was just like, well, you gotta understand the real estate lead generation business. And he's all like, and I'm sure you'll probably get it because you've seen it, is these companies, they'll sell these real estate leads to real estate investors, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, right? And they'll sell it as if it's the best leads ever. Meaning say, hey, I got the phone number, I got the email, most of the time email, right? It says, hey, these are the best leads ever and if you pay X amount of dollars every single month, I will provide you X amount of leads, whatever that number is. And he started explaining this process. I said, yeah, that's very true. And I was like, yeah, man, I bought leads from every single company. And I said, some are good, some are uh, great, and then suddenly turns turns bad, and some are just garbage. <laughs> so he said, that is the reason why I don't pay premium by buying at, uh, market value and I said okay what, what does that mean he was just like well you got to understand a lot of these people in the real estate business suck at follow-up 
And not only do they suck at follow-up, they suck at marketing. And he was just like, yeah, because of that, you know how real estate is. It's a longer transaction cycle. It's a sales cycle, meaning that, hey, someone might be interested in doing a refinance, all right, but it might take you like six months to a year to actually convert the lead from the time that they think about it, right? And then getting them off the fence and it says, hey, let's make this happen. And he's all like, have you ever had that happen? And I was like, well, refinance, I don't know. But I was just like, yeah, buying houses, yeah, all day long. I said, hey, I'm sure these lead vendors have some type of like squeeze pages or lead capture funnel online. And then they're using paid advertisement or they might be doing some SEOs with uh, silo websites and stuff like that. And if you don't know what silo websites means, it's basically a kind of like a sister website that people hold just for strictly lead generation purposes. And then they'll use that site to uh, get it ranked for certain keywords words in certain uh, cities okay and when they do that they start getting leads and uh, once they get the leads obviously they're selling you the leads okay and he said yeah exactly you know it's a longer life cycle so when I buy he's all like I want to make sure that older it is the better because he said a seller if one time they said they're interested in selling he was just like do you think that they might be a seller or buyer later on and I was just like and I thought about that for a second I was just like huh would they be a seller or buyer later on? I was like, yeah, because if you own a house, if you don't sell, you still own the house, so you might want to sell later on, right? And then I was like, okay, but let's just say that they did sell the house. Well, most people will buy afterwards, right? And it's kind of like ding, 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 oh yeah, that makes sense. And then from there, he said, yeah, but this is the reason why when I do mortgages, it works so well is because I can buy old seller leads and these sellers, if they don't sell, they may want to refinance. And if they did sell, guess what? They have a new house that they bought on a purchase loan and I might be able to refinance them again. And again, keep in mind, this is because as the real estate market is taking off and they're gonna have equity and stuff like that. So I was just like, wow, that's interesting. And I said, so how do you do it? And then he was just like, well, it's easy. There's two ways to do it. And he was just like, one, he's all like, you gotta find these uh, vendors and making sure that these vendors don't have a set contract time, right? Meaning like, hey, you're set with them to say, hey, you have to pay 12 months, you gotta pay six months contract, whatever it is. But even if they do have that contract, what you have to ask is you have to find out how much data they have. And I was just like, okay. And he started explaining, said a lot of these lead vendors, um, they'll sell you on future leads that you're gonna get, right? But really, I don't care about that. I care about the stuff that they got six months, within the six months to a year. And I was like, oh, okay. And so he told me, that's how you do it. And I said, is that the only way? And he says, no, there's another way. And I said, okay, what's the other way? And he was just like, well, do you know that there's a secondary market in the data business? And I was just like, well, I'm sure there is. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know there is always a secondary market um, that the regular public don't know about, right? So in, even in the space of real estate, all right, the transactional real estate is in the uh, consumer to consumer transaction is what? A traditional sale, a traditional buy, right? But under that, you have a secondary market that that moves a lot of real estate which is called the wholesale industry right where a lot of capital growth type of investors right people that need to make big chunks of cash will come into the secondary uh, market will they'll get properties under contract and then sell them to other people right it's like having an option in stocks okay so if you have anyone has traded stocks and you know how options work right you get a contract on a property you get equitable interest in the the actual property right because that contract that you hold to buy something has has value okay and you're selling your actual equitable interest in that contract to someone else that's willing to pay slightly more for it so every industry pretty much has that right and or a liquidation market meaning like even in the world of furniture right I discovered this is that if people can't sell furniture there is a secondary market where people come in and instead of holding on to inventory they'll sell it to another company at a discount so that way they can float money in the in the company right so every business literally has has this all right you just might not be aware of it so again I knew this so I said yeah I'm pretty sure of it and, and then he was just like well yeah so there's something called age data brokers I'm like age data brokers people that sell old leads it was like yeah these brokers go around and uh, with their relationships that they have with lead vendors they'll go ahead and buy the data from those lead vendors at pennies and not only that but they're buying in bulk of million records at a time 
nationwide. And I was like, really? And then right when he said that, right, me, I got goosebumps. I got excited. I was just like, how do I get hold of them? How do they do that? And he's just like, well, it's not publicly marketed. And he was like, yeah, think about it. You don't want people to know that the people in the secondary market is selling your personal information to other people. And I was just like, well, I guess to me, it's not a big deal, right? Like, cause I know that's true. I know for a fact that, hey, you know what? This app that you have on your cell phone called the Facebook app, they're literally listening to all your conversations so they can sell you more advertisements, sell you more stuff, right? Like I know that. Same thing with Google, right? Every single website that you go on on your computer, even though you think that there no one's paying attention, you go on that website that maybe you shouldn't be on, okay? Google knows. And then same thing as uh, if you heard my other podcast where I talked about Amazon and Amazon's Echo, right? Where the device that you put inside the house and it's kind of like Siri, but for the house, they're recording everything. So the general public, they don't want you to know that you're selling your personal information, right? Um, but us as marketers, us as a business owners, we know that this is going on. So I said, okay, so tell me more about this. And then he was just like, yeah, so you have to contact these people and just buy it. And I was like, so well, how much is it? And he's all like, well, the last one I bought, I did a million records for about a penny. And I was like, what? I said a penny. And then suddenly I was just like, penny for what? And it was just like, well, emails and phone numbers, right? Some have phone numbers, some have emails. And I was just like to myself, like, wow, you can get phone numbers and emails of sellers and buyers in the real estate business for one cent. And then I completely forgot to listen to the other part where they said you have to buy for a million records. Now, if you're quick on math, how much is a million records at one cent? Yeah, so it'd be $10,000. Now, if you don't have $10,000 to go out and buy that batch of block of data, then that's an issue, right? And then he said, oh, okay. And then after that conversation, I started thinking back and forth. I was just like, man, like how can I get leads for a penny? And then it dawned on me, the easiest way is guess what? Partner up JV with people in the same industry, but that's not in your same local marketplace. So he said that, and then obviously I didn't take action for it, okay? Because I heard about it, I was like, wow, that sounds cool, but sounds like it's a lot of work at first. Then the next thing I said, wow, that sounds really cool. I think I need to do this, but I just don't know how, right? And so I went into research mode and started finding the information, and then I contacted my old data guy that I used to buy all the time, and then I basically said, I threw him out, and I said, hey man, uh, how many leads did you get this past 30 days? And he was just like, well, we generated over 2,000. So you're telling me that uh, um, the last 12 months that you have uh, 2,000 times 12, which is about 24,000 records? And he was like, no, we have a lot more. Because uh, at that time when I was having a conversation, it was like late in the year, right? So so uh, lead generation kind of slows down when people clock out for the holiday, right? So that's what happened. And then he was like, yeah, so how much? And he was just like, well, about 40. I was just like, really? And I was just like, let me ask you this. If Would you sell me all those 40,000 records? And if that's the case, how much are you willing to sell it for? He's all like, how much you want for it? And then I was just like, five cents a record. I threw that out. And he was just like, five cents? He was just like... Let's do it. And then I was just like, damn it, I offered too much. But I could have probably got it like two and a half cents or something like that, right? Um, but the point is, I'm telling you all this story, right? Is the fact that I asked, the fact that I got. And then out of that, literally, you go into that 40,000 records and you see a bunch of phone numbers, bunch of emails in there. This is probably the easiest lead generation method, right? Number one, I don't need to know any technology stuff. I don't need to know about any lead capture site. I don't need to know about any of that stuff. And why is because you just literally picked up the phone, had a conversation, negotiated a price, and once they negotiated, they just send you the literally the Excel spreadsheet with the contact information. And on that, you have the homeowner's information, you have the first name, last name, you got phone numbers, right? These phone numbers are mixed with home phone numbers and cell phone numbers, and then email addresses as well, right? And I was just like whoa this is pretty awesome okay and then and then that obviously converted into business I want to end with this okay is to expand your way of lead generation expand the way you think of what a lead generation is all about and to do that you have to first define what a lead is okay what is a definition of a lead all right, and I asked this in a mastermind group uh, just recently about this I said I said hey what what's a, what's a lead to you guys? And I kind of put bullet points, right? I was just like someone that's willing to sell or buy or lease. But I'm a firm believer a lead is just simply defined as a phone number and email or a property address, some way, a mode of commute, the way that you can communicate with that actual individual. And obviously they have a propensity to buy, sell, or lease, in this case, real estate, okay? So if you have a phone number email, right? That's a lead in my opinion. 
Now, once you make contact with that person, you get in a conversation with that individual, then that leads turns into, guess what? A prospect, all right? So when you start thinking in, okay, phone numbers, emails, then the question you should start asking is, well, how do I get more phone numbers and more emails? Right, And that boils down to building a database. That boils down to building your Rolodex. That, that is another way to look at it is building your sphere of influence or your network. Right, The cliche saying in business, and I've heard this over and over from my mentors, is what? Your net worth is the size of your network. Right? Like, you know, it's, it's so true. It is. Right? The more people you know, um, typically you're going to have a much higher net worth than the other individual that does not. And with the power of technology, right now and then obviously privacy is a big issue because nothing is private anymore right everyone can get information of anyone any uh, nowadays and because of that if you understand that and you just simply embrace it versus being like well people shouldn't have my email address and they shouldn't even be selling my phone number and email address and you get upset about it look you're not doing any yourself any justice, okay? Don't fight the market force, okay? You cannot fight the market force. And instead of that, instead of that, embrace the change of transparency or other words, no privacy, right? And just simply use it for their advantage in your business so you can have a leverage in your business to grow it. Because here's the bottom line. Currently right now, as the online space of digital marketing is growing and growing, and a lot of people are making a lot of, you know, I like to call noise, right? They're, they're making a lot of noise and says, hey, this is the right way, this is the, the wrong way, you should do it that way versus this way and that way, right? Is, are they right? Well, probably it could if you just do it, but also at the same time, there's another component that no one else is talking about, right? Which is understanding age data. And a final thought on this, right? With age data, I've discovered that you can do a lot of things, especially whatever vertical that you're in. And when I say vertical, it doesn't matter what business you're in, but when you start thinking outside of what you're conditioned to think about, you understand that you no longer have a lead generation problem. Here's an example, right? A lot of times people in the real estate space uh, will only go after people in uh, the real estate industry to look for real estate lead generation vendors. I stopped doing that when I discovered how to do this. Guess what I did? I went after actual uh, lead vendors in the insurance business. Why? Because I used to buy leads when I was in the insurance business. I used to buy leads in the insurance business. So in the insurance business, there's something called X date leads, right? X date stands for expiration date. Expiration date of what? An expiration date of an insurance policy. Now. If you know this, right, Exper you can buy expiration or, or someone that has a propensity of an uh, insurance policy that's going to expire, right? And, and these lead vendors are selling leads to insurance agents, all right? What type of leads would you buy from that lead vendor if you're in the real estate space? Ask yourself that, right? Now, if you said homeowners insurance, you're 100% correct. Okay, so that's what I have done, right? You buy X, X dates that are homeowners insurance. Guess why? Those vendors won't be selling that actual what leads if they were not homeowners, meaning that they don't own a if they own a property, right? What about for buyers? What about renters insurance, right? So other one is uh, uh, Medicare supplements, right? Another one that you can get is in the financial okay industry, and there's so many more if you just think about it. All right. So again. It's really, really powerful when you understand this, and um, I've been using it really, really aggressively in my business, and one of the reasons why I'm able to do the things that I do is because I understand the aged data secrets. So that's what I got for you on this episode. If you enjoyed this, regardless if you're listening to this on YouTube, you're listening to this on iTunes, uh, wherever you're listening this to this, if you got value on it, let me know um, by either leaving me a review somewhere or putting a comment below and saying, hey, Jeff, that was pretty awesome, and or reach out to me and let me know what you got. So this is Jeff Koga and I got to get into the office and that's what I got. Go out there, keep on grinding.